Hi everyone. In the last video we saw our editorial team work through the copy editing stage in OJS3. In this video we're going to walk through the production stage, which includes layout editing, proofreading, and scheduling the submission to an upcoming issue. Let's start again with Tim, our section editor, who can see that the submission is now in production. And he'll click on this entry to open it. Right away, he's got a notification to assign a user to create the galleys using the assign link in the participants list, which is right here. And he's going to look for a layout editor. And he's going to pick Daryl Neal to do this. Again, like in copy editing, um, your journal might just have you working on it and doing all of these roles, doing copy editing, doing the layout editing, the proofreading, so you don't have to worry about assigning different people. But if you do have a journal with a larger team, you can make these assignments right here. We're going to request the galleys using one of the drop downs. Again, we can see the text has already been written for us, which is great, and we'll say OK. We can now see that we're awaiting the galleys. We have the production ready files. Those were the ones that were um, copy edited um, by our copy editor and moved over into production. And we can see that we've got a discussion, got that duplication happening again. Don't worry about that, um, where Tim has asked Daryl to make the, the galleys. We can see Daryl's now included over here as a layout editor. And that's it for Tim. He can now sit back and wait for Daryl to make those galleys. Let's take a look at what Daryl sees. All right, Daryl is going to be responsible for making our PDFs. Um, in some journals, you might also have HTML files, you might have EPUB files, you might have XML files, and it's going to be the responsibility of the layout editor, or maybe it's called the production editor in your journal, the name's not important, to make up those files that readers will actually be reading. We can see when we log in as Daryl, again, much like the copy editor, he's only got a link to the submissions. None of the other options are there. And we can see just what's in his queue. He can't see all of the submissions in the journal. And if he was to go to archives, he could only see things that he worked on in the past. So let's take a quick look here. We're in the production stage. Daryl can click on the production ready file to download it to his desktop. He can see the text of the request that he received. He could add a message just saying I'm on it just to let Tim, our section editor, know that the work is underway. Outside of OJS, he's going to open this up in Word and he's going to make the transformation, um, whether it's as simple as turning it into a PDF or whether it's doing something much more complex like turning it into an XML file. We're going to keep this very straightforward. We're just going to do a PDF. We're going to hit Add Galley. Let's say PDF. Um, it's in English. There's a link here. This galley will be available as a separate website. If we were clicking out to a web page um, external to our journal, um, we could click this and then just put in a URL instead of uploading a file. Uh, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to save. Again, when we upload, we have to indicate it's what type of file it is. What's the article component? This is text. Upload grab our PDF. Looks good. Continue. Details are fine. And the file's been added. Complete. And our galley's uploaded. If there were multiple galleys, if we then had an HTML version, we would just hit add galley, put in the HTML label, upload the HTML file, and we would be done. So that's completed. Let's make a discussion. We can let Tim know, and we can also let the author know. 
that the galleys are ready for proofreading. Please take a look. And let's say OK. That message is now gone out. Jalal, the author, can take a look at those PDFs and make sure he's happy with it. The editor can also take a look and make sure that he's happy with those. If we had an external person who was also um, going to act as an independent proofreader, the section editor would be able to add that person as well. Um, but that'll all depend on what the workflow is in your journal. Again, OJS3 has really been made to be flexible enough to allow you to involve the right people that match um, what your editorial processes are. So that's it for our layout editor. Let's jump back in and see what our section editor sees. All right, Tim's received an email from uh, Daryl, our layout editor, letting him know that the galleys are ready. We'll click on our entry. Of course, we're taken right to the production stage. You can see our discussions that are tracked here. And most importantly, we can see the galley. We can edit it, we could change the file, we could delete it. But what we really want to do is just click on it. This is just a test, so nothing too fancy there. Uh, but it quickly opens up that PDF and we can see that it looks fine. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe we find that there's a, an error that's been introduced. And again, that's where we'll use the discussion to communicate back to the uh, layout editor that we need some changes. Similarly, on the author's side, if the author saw something that he was unhappy with, he'd be able to use the discussion tool to ask for that to be corrected. But we're going to say everything looks good. We're happy with those galleys. Proofreading has been fine. Now, another thing Tim should remember to do once he's confirmed that the galley files are satisfactory is to return up to the top and look at the metadata. Make sure the section is correct, the title information is correct, the abstract is correct, the contributors are all correct. If there was a cover image to include in the table of contents, add it here. Make sure any metadata, such as keywords shown here, are correct. Just confirm that that metadata is all perfect. Hit save if you've made any changes. And we can close that window. One final step is to schedule it for production. And we just head up here. And we can say we want it to be in the current issue. If there was a future issue for, you know, maybe volume one, number two was in production, we could add it to that. If we even wanted to add it to a back issue, we could do that. Let's just pick volume one, number one. If there were page numbers, we could add those. We can attach the following permissions. This is a CC by non-commercial 4.0 license. The copyright holder are the authors. Copyright years 2018. Those are all pulled in from the settings that the journal editor set uh, when the journal was first created. We can override those for individual entries, but most of the time the defaults are what you want. We say save. And that's it. The submission has now been included in the issue. And when that issue is published, it, the submission will be available as it, within the table of contents. In the next video, We'll take a quick look at how to create a new issue for your journal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you there.